The first power is currently streaming on Tubi. It's from 1990, and it is a supernatural body-hopping possession movie about a detective and a psychic teaming up to stop this sadistic uh, Satanist killer who was put to death in the gas chamber, and now he's seeking revenge from beyond the grave. So getting into what I don't like about the movie, some nitpicks and gripes is I feel like the plot's a little derivative like I feel like we've already seen this movie time and time again and I feel like it's been done better like The Hidden and Shocker like those are more entertaining movies but this is like a kind of lesser version of those so it's like if you're gonna like have the same plot almost as those movies basically the same kind of movie just guy coming back after being sent to the chair to hunt down the cop yet again like Make it fun. Like, make it more fun. Have it just go balls to the wall crazy like Shocker. This is much more serious, and I would have liked more silly shit to happen. It gets silly and goofy in moments, but it's not as goofy as you would expect or want from a movie like this with this premise. Like, it should have went for it more. Um, but, and some of the effects are messy. Uh, just some of the slit throat effects, like Aftermath, like, just... A little red smudge and you can see their pulse like they're clearly still alive uh so so some bad dead acting and uh yeah it just it has a typical ending that i didn't like you saw it coming so i didn't like the way it ended at the very last second and i didn't like this the supernatural teleporting thing like it's trying to be two different things it's like body hopping possession movie but also supernatural killer who is like teleporting but yet he's in like people's bodies so he's making these people able to teleport like i don't like that when killers and movies can teleport it just makes you question why they're not doing it more often and it's like it would be so easy since he has that power like he's so powerful in this movie he could kill these characters instantly like realistically Lou Diamond Phillips and Tracy Griffin their characters would have been dead day one so why he's stretching it out this much I don't know just to fuck with them I just I don't like that they were doing both like body hopping possession and guy can teleport and like what made it even more irritating was that in one moment he like teleports with someone else who is not possessed by him so like he's in this bag lady there's a car accident and then the bag lady with tracy griffin like they just disappear and teleport so that just bugged me like enough with the teleporting shit just make it body hopping only and this movie has multiple like fake outs like dream sequences hallucinations and that can get kind of tiresome after a while like a cat scare and there's a forced like romance between these two characters that just kind of came out of nowhere it shocked me i was like whoa i was not sensing that much of a romance between them before this like there was nothing there they're just they're on a mission they should be more focused and it's like oh my gosh what do we do now uh let's just start making out like it just came out of nowhere they just start kissing it just felt so forced like what the fuck where did this come from so i did not like that i never like forced romance in movies but what I like about the movie is it is fast paced. It's never boring to me. It just, it's go, go, go. It paces like an action movie, really. And there's lots of action sequences. Not like a super ton, but, you know, there's car chases and, you know, lots of stunts and fights. And it gets fun in moments. And it gets a little goofy in moments, too. And that's what kind of saves it. It makes it a little entertaining. It's not boring. And, like, there's cool funny little silly moments like the ceiling fan that turns into like a lawnmower and like there's crazy shit like that but i just wish there was more of it and i love that the weapon that they need to defeat this evil is a crucifix that has like a hidden knife inside of it and you this, this nun just takes it like steals it from the church and then she just whips the thing out and the knife is there and she's like all right let's go do this like it gets a little corny in moments. There's some corny dialogue that I liked between the cops. And I liked some of the the casting here. Like, 
the chick from Sleepaway Camp 3. You got Lou Diamond Phillips. The only other horror movie I've seen him in was that horrible uh, Route 666, I think it was. Um, you got George from The Final Destination in that third Purge movie, I want to say. It was the third one. Maybe it was the second one. I think it was the third one. Uh, so, yeah, like, the acting was fine. I don't think the acting was terrible or anything. It was just average, serviceable cinematography, you know, lighting, camera work. It's a decently made movie. So it's not poorly made. It's just, you know, we've seen this already before the last two years leading up to this. Like, in 1988, 89, like, you saw this movie again and again. Like, in 1989, you had three of these, I believe. Like, you had Shocker. You had the horror show, you had Nightmare Beach, like all these anti, uh, you know, capital punishment movies. And it's like, here's another one. I'm sure there was another one that came out in 1990 also. But it's like, if you're going to make the same movie that these other people have already made right before you, like, stand out. Try to stand out to make it more fun, more original somehow. But it's just kind of the same movie, but not as, like, balls of the wall crazy, not as entertaining as those and that's really the downfall of the movie, is that it could have been more fun, uh, not boring, like I said, it's not, it's fast paced, but it just, it could have been even more fun, and I could have rated it a lot higher, but they didn't really go for it. So final thoughts, this is another body hopping possession, like anti-capital punishment movie that has some goofy, corny sequences that are entertaining, but like I said, just not enough, it's mainly played straight, um, and you know, and I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, it's fine, but I would more recommend go check out like The Hidden or Shocker. Those are more fun. So when it comes to first power, I'll just give it three out of five. All right, spoiler discussion. So we get some sexual harassment right out of the gate, and this woman just laughs it off like, Haha, so funny, checking out my ass. Like this guy's talking about his co-worker's ass, and she just laughs it off, and then she gets snatched by the killer, and I love that when Logan catches up to the killer, even though he got stabbed in the gut three times, he just keeps fighting. Which is funny because in other horror movies, if you got stabbed in the gut once, they seem to just drop dead instantly. But in this movie, that's not the case. It's more realistic. You would slowly bleed out, you know, or maybe you wouldn't die as long as you got help quickly, you know, like... In all these other movies, they just get stabbed and they drop dead. In this one, he gets stabbed three times and he still can put up a fight and start bashing this fucker's head against the ground, which I liked. I like that he's a fighter. And then he gets the gas chamber. Um, and you just know it's a dream sequence. Like, as soon <laughs> as soon as he whips out the knife, it's like, how, how does he have a knife? He's in the gas, you know, he's in the chair, hands strapped, he breaks out, and then he has a knife in his hand, he breaks the glass, he's coming towards... You know, Lou Diamond Phillips. And I'm just like, this has to be a dream sequence. Please tell me this is a dream. And of course it was. But then as soon as he wakes up from that dream sequence, a cat just jumps on the bed. So we get dream sequence followed by cat scare. So almost immediately after uh, Patrick is sent to the chair, he starts having hallucinations. We got a lot of that throughout the movie. Like something's there, now it's not. And people won't believe him. He sees Carmen's been killed the undercover cop from earlier and you can see her like her pulse on her neck like her heart's still beating and ollie george from the final destination he gets brutally killed by a horse that he gets ran over and then the horse just keeps stomping on his chest again and again that would be a horrible way to go and then there's a moment when channing patrick channing he jumps off this 10-story building and it looked like he was about to land on those, like, stunt pads that blow up, you know, to cushion the fall. It was like this big yellow yellow thing. And then in the next shot, there's nothing yellow down there at all. So I'm thinking that's a goof. Um, yeah, it looked like there was something down there, but then it was gone the next moment. Nothing yellow anywhere. So then Maza, his, he's found dead, the other cop, he's found dead, hanging underneath a bridge. They're like, how the hell did he get up there? And... Maza was in The Blob and Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I recognized him. And then he goes to confession, and instantly I was like, I bet that priest is possessed. And, of course, yeah, we get kind of like an Exorcist 3 moment here. And speaking of which, there's an actor later on who was in Exorcist 3, and that came out the same year as this movie. And so, 
Yeah, Tess has a vision of the future, like 30 seconds into the future, of Logan getting an axe to the head, but it's a poorly done effect. It's clearly like a reverse shot and no blood. And then he takes the ceiling fan off, you know, he takes the ceiling fan and then the blade starts spinning like a thousand miles an hour. It's like a lawnmower blade. So that was kind of cool. Bill Mosley, we see as the bartender. And then we get some backstory for the killer. We find out that his grandpa molested his mother. So his grandpa is his dad. And the grandma, of course, knew about it, but never said anything. She just let it happen because she's fucking evil. <laughs> and then... So yeah, he body hops into this other detective, Grimes, and then they throw him off a building. He lands on a pipe. And then we get this forced kiss out of nowhere. And this floating bag lady, she's just jumping in front of the window, like twirling in the air. It's very silly. And then she just breaks through the glass and starts saying some corny shit in like an Irish accent. And then we get this major crash, like spinning in the air, and then, like, that would probably, realistically, kill them. But then, of course, Tess is not even in the car. She teleported out of there with the bag lady. Then he teams up with this nun at this church. Uh, and, oh, there was another cameo by the reanimator dude. I forget his name, but, you know, he was the severed head. West! Uh, you know, he was in here. And, but yeah, he teams up with the nun who wouldn't help them for some reason earlier, but now she's like, oh, I guess I should start helping out. I'm not sure what made her change her mind, but <laughs> she did, and she's got the crucifix knife. And then, you know, they get to the place to help out Tess. You know, she's on this, like, pentagram marking on the ground. There's candles everywhere, and the bag lady's attacking, and he shoots the bag lady a bunch in the face, and finally she drops dead. And then he somehow is able to body hop into the, the sister, you know, the nun, and that just seems kind of like it's breaking the rules because they said a couple of times in the film, like, oh, he he's able to get into the bodies of people who are, like, vulnerable, like, you know, don't have faith or they're alcoholics. You know, they don't have a good sense of reality, blah, blah, blah. Like, And then he just gets into this nun who is none of those things. Like, she has plenty of faith. She's not an alcoholic that I know of. Like, how did he hop in her body? That seems like it's breaking the rules. I didn't like that. Um, but whatever. And then, you know, they throw him into, like, an acid bath. This big old tub of acid that's down there for some reason. I don't know where they are exactly, but there's a big old tub of acid. Then, out of nowhere, the police show up. And we get kind of like this, the omen moment you know at the end of the movie he's about to stab the evil and the cops are like put down the weapon but he stabs the you know the killer anyways with the crucifix knife and like a big old glowing light shoots out of her wound like you know freddy krueger at the end of dream warriors just light beams shooting out of her chest that looked a little silly and then he gets shot by the cops and for some reason tess never spoke up in his defense like tess was right there she could have been like no don't shoot you know, but she, she, she said nothing. She kept quiet. He got shot. Now he's in the hospital. And we get another dream sequence fake out here where, you know, uh, what's his name? Logan starts attacking uh, Tess in the hospital room. And then she wakes up and is like, you know, was that a vision of the future? Or am I just, you know, having a crazy nightmare? And then it just fades to black and white. And we hear like a voiceover from the killer basically implying that he body hopped into Logan and it's not over. But again, that's rule breaking because he stabbed, you know, what's his face? I'm blanking on names. Patrick. He stabbed, he stabbed Patrick, glowing lights indicating the evil, you know, is gone. Success. Nope. Like what? I don't like those endings where it's like they establish these rules. Like you got to do this to achieve this. And then they do exactly what they were told. And then the end's like, well, never mind. Like, it's it's still not working. Like, you know, I just reviewed a movie kind of like that recently. Another patron request. What was it? Like, Happy Hell Night. Like, they established these rules. They follow it to the T. Like, they did it all. And at the end, they're like, well, fuck you. We're still going to say it's not over. Like, it's so lazy. Like, stop with those endings. So, yeah, that is the end of the first power 
Have you seen this movie? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's all opinion. You don't need to get butt hurt about it.